In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this much needed upgraded lathe cart. It's got four drawers, which is enough room for your turning tools, your face plates, and any accessories that you need for your lathe, as well as room on the right side for your bulb links and any other accessories. Like all other projects that I make out of plywood, my first task is to break down the sheet goods into a more manageable size. To do this, I lay down a sheet of foam, and then I lay down the plywood on top of the foam. I then use my track saw to break down the plywood. The lathe cart was made using only two sheets of three quarter inch plywood and less than a half of a sheet of a quarter inch plywood for the drawer bottoms. With the sheets broken down, I can now begin cutting the case components. First up are the top and the bottom panels. I cut them to 12 inches in width. Even though the plywood pieces are smaller, they are still a hassle to handle, so to assist in cutting the pieces, I set up a roller stand to help to support the pieces as I break them down to their final size. Next, I cut the two side panels to length as they were already cut to width using the track saw. I installed a 3 quarter inch dado stack to cut a groove on the inside edge of all four case parts for the back panel to set in. The dado stack is raised to 3 eighths of an inch. To keep the groove a consistent depth, I used push pads to put pressure on the board above the blade. To join the case components, I used pocket screws. I lay out and drill four pocket holes on each end of the top and the bottom panel. I clamp it into place and drill the pocket holes. So I wanted to pause the video to give you a quick note. Uh, I put the pocket holes on the wrong side of these panels. The holes should go on the bottom of the bottom panel and the top of the top panel so they're not visible when the case is assembled. Uh, I'll show you later on how I filled these with some pocket hole plugs. So next I just rotated the bottom panel and then put four pocket holes on the opposite end. I've repeated these same steps for the top. The plywood I used wasn't exactly flat and it made clamping the side panels a task. To make this easier, I placed the top and the bottom panels on a couple of calls with holes drilled on them so that I could clamp the plywood down to the calls to flatten it out. This made attaching the side panels a whole lot easier. Another jig that I use when attaching the side panels is my right angle clamping jigs. If you're interested in seeing how I made them, I will leave a link below to my video. They made attaching the side panels a breeze. I attached the side panels using one and a quarter inch pocket hole screws. Next, I attach the bottom panel the same way by first clamping it to the cause and then placing the side panels on the end and then screwing in the pocket hole screws. With the case assembled, I can now measure and cut the divider to final size by first cutting it to width, and then to length using my crosscut sled. Each end of the divider gets three pocket holes. To place the divider 24 inches from the side panel, I cut two spacers out of plywood that are 24 inches long. This not only makes the installation easier, but it's more accurate considering the placement of this panel dictates the size of the drawers. Before attaching the back panel, I drill the shelf pin holes using the Craig jig. I cut a plywood spacer to 8 and a quarter inches long to make this process repeatable. I place the jig on top of the plywood spacer and then drill the quarter inch shelf pin holes. I drill six holes and then move the jig to the other four corners. For the back corner, I removed a piece from the jig that allowed me to place the jig flat against the side panel. The groove for the back panel was in the way, so I couldn't use the jig like I did on the other three corners. To strengthen the lathe card, I made a back panel out of three quarter inch plywood. To attach the back panel, I used 18 gauge brad nails. I used a framing square to mark the center line for the divider panel to make sure that I made good contact when shooting the nails. With the back panel installed, the final piece for the case was the shelf. After cutting it to width at the table saw, I used the miter saw to cut it to its final length. Now I can begin breaking down the plywood for the drawer components. To cut the groove on the drawer parts, I used my table saw. I set the fence to a quarter inch and raised the blade to a quarter inch. I made a pass on all the drawer parts and then I moved the fence over an eighth of an inch and made another pass, essentially giving me a quarter inch wide by a quarter inch deep groove. Next, I cut the quarter inch plywood to size for the bottom panels by first cutting it to width, and then to length using my miter gauge with a stop block. To assemble the drawer boxes, I again used pocket holes. I put two pocket holes on each end of the front and the back drawer parts. Holding the drawer parts in place while you drive the screws is tricky, but I found that using a right angle clamps makes this task a breeze. I have two of these clamps and it allows me to hold three of the four parts into place. With the two side pieces screwed to the front, I insert the drawer bottom. And then I slide the back into place, holding it with a clamp while driving the final four screws. 
To install the drawer slides, I use three different spacers. You may be able to rearrange the drawer slides and use fewer spacers, but this is my method. For the bottom drawer, I use a two and an eighth inch spacer, inset the drawer slide an eighth of an inch, and install two screws. I then place the spacer on the opposite wall to install the other drawer slide. For the next two drawers, I switched over to a five and an eighth inch spacer. Again, I inset the drawer slide an eighth of an inch from the edge and then drive in two screws. For the top drawer, I use a three and a quarter inch spacer. This will ensure that the drawer slides are nice and centered on the drawers. To install the second half of the drawer slides on the drawer boxes, I again use spacers. For the bottom three drawers, I use a two inch spacer. With the drawer slide flush with the front of the drawer, I drive in two screws. So using spacers is not only repeatable, but it makes everything easier. Since the top drawer is not as deep as the bottom three drawers, I switched over to using a 1 and 9 30 seconds of an inch spacer. For the false drawer fronts, I wanted to use one piece of plywood to get some nice green continuation from top to bottom. So to begin, I set the fence and cut the false drawer fronts for the bottom three drawers. Since the top drawer is not as deep, I reset the fence and cut the small false drawer front. And as you can see, the pattern of the grain flows from the top to the bottom. To install the drawer fronts, I start with the bottom drawer. It sits flush with the bottom of the cart, so it's as simple as setting it down and clamping it into place since I have the lathe sitting on my assembly table. And next, I pre-drilled and installed two screws. Now to space the rest of the drawer fronts, I placed an eighth inch spacer on top of the drawer front that I just installed and placed the next drawer front on the spacers, clamping it into place, and then I drive two screws. I keep doing this for the rest of the drawer fronts. Now this wouldn't be a mobile cart without casters, so I installed four locking casters. They not only prevent the cart from rolling, but they also lock from swiveling as well. The plans call for a three quarter inch plywood top, but I'm gonna repurpose the top from my old lathe cabinet. Since my new lathe cart is smaller, I'm gonna need to cut it down first by cutting it to width at the table saw and then I cut it to the length using the track saw. To attach the top to the lathe cabinet, I pre-drilled and installed six evenly spaced screws. The cherry top had several stains from being used over the years, so I sanded with 80, 120, and 20 to grit to refinish the surface. I had a profile on the edge that I really liked, which I had to cut off to resize the top, so after the top was sanded, I used my plunge router to route that same profile. I started with the end grain just in case there was some tear out and then routed the sides of the top. And after five minutes of routing, it makes the top look a whole lot better. To protect the top and to make it look better, I brushed on two coats of a garnet shellac using an ox hair brush. The last thing on the list was to drill the holes for the drawer pulls. I again used the Craig jig to aid in getting repeatable hole placements. And that's a theme throughout the whole project. Anytime that I can use a jig or a spacer, it just makes everything repeatable and a whole lot easier. To begin, I put a piece of masking tape on the drawer front and mark the center line for the length of the drawer. And then I put the Craig jig on that center line and set a combination square to the distance from the side of the drawer so I can use this repeatably throughout the rest of the drawers. And then I clamp it into place and use a 5 16 inch drill to drill the holes. And now it's just as simple as removing the jig and installing the hardware. Oh yeah, remember how I mentioned that I needed to fix the visible pocket holes? Well, I filled them with some Craig Cherry pocket hole plugs. I just glued them into place, and then I used a flush cut saw to remove the excess. It's not perfect, but hey, it matches the top at least. So now that the cart's done, I've got everything back into place. It's the perfect height for turning, and doesn't have a bunch of wasted space behind it like my old lathe cabinet. I can fit all of my turning blanks, which is only two at the moment, and a bunch of other scrap wood in the storage area. And the drawers fit the turning tools, chucks, and more. This was a much needed project that came out awesome. I appreciate you guys watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, share it with a friend, and if you're not already, uh, don't forget to subscribe.